Hi everyone! Today I will be walking us through a NACLO problem called We Are All Molistic in a Way. So just to give a little bit of background information on NACLO, NACLO stands for the North American Computational Linguistics Open Competition and it is basically an Olympiad for a people like me, so middle schoolers and high schoolers, and basically every year we get to go to a competition site either in the U.S. or Canada and solve these really fun linguistics or computational linguistics puzzles. And the top 10% of those competitors move on to semifinals, and then the top USA and Canada candidates from semifinals gets to compete in the International Linguistics Olympiad. All right, so enough of that background information. I will just dive right into this problem over here. So this is a 2007 NACLO problem. So it's, wow, it's been already 14 years since then. And basically it's worth 10 points. I think nowadays it might be worth five points. And I think at least the competition I went to last time was 100 points in total. I think it's usually 100 points in total. So that's just to give a little bit perspective. All right, so diving into this problem, usually when I start a NACLA problem, I usually keep in mind that it's usually something like background information in the beginning, and then either there's another introduction later on, or there's just the questions that we have to answer. So over here, we have some questions, and over here, we have our background information. So why don't we just start off by reading what we have. So the problem says, imagine that you have heard these sentences. Jane is molistic and slatty. Jennifer is cluvious and brastic. And I'm sure you can read, so I don't want to read the rest of these for you. But what I notice is there are lots of these like funny words, right? Like molistic and slatty, and I have no idea what they mean. Um, Blitty, cluvy, sloshful, sloshful, frumsy. Strunky and stroffy. Huh, this is interesting. So we see that there's one thing that actually makes sense here. So Diane was a pleasure to watch. So something might be up with this sentence, but the rest of the sentences just seem to be nonsense words. Cluvius, brastics, salespeople, or cluvius, laddie. All right, so that's all the information they give us for this entire problem. And then now they're asking them some questions. So the first question says, which of the following would we likely hear? And then here again, we have blitty, brastic, molistic, cluvius. So Meredith is blitty and brastic. The singer was not only molistic, but also cluvius. May found a dog that was dainty, but sloshful. Interesting. And let's look at our second question. So our second question is telling us, what quality or qualities would you be looking for in a person? So blitty, wheezy, slothful, frumsy. Again, no idea what any of these words mean. And third problem over here, it says to explain all our answers. And the hint they give us is the sounds of the words are not relevant to the meanings. So I think this is basically telling us that we shouldn't like try to guess what each of these words mean. Like maybe... To someone wheezy might sound like a negative attribute, right? But the problem's telling us don't guess that. Okay, very interesting. So the first thing I see is most of these sentences, if you look at the structure, seem to be consisting of either and or but, right? So Jane is molistic and slatty. Over here we have Molly and Kyle are slatty but dainty. And then Usually in English, I guess, how would you use like and versus but, right? So like but also, but and. So I guess maybe we can try forming some of our own sentence, right? Like Jane is, Jane is maybe nice and helpful, right? I mean, I guess that could be a sentence and that would be a sentence that makes sense. Uh, let's try making a sentence with but. Mary is bloody but cluvy. So would we say Mary is nice but helpful? I mean, that doesn't exactly make sense, right? I might say Mary is nice but unhelpful, right? So like, just from forming these sentences on our own, I guess what we can notice is when you use the word and, right? The word, the adjectives here, nice and helpful, 
they're both positive, right? So you can say Jane is nice and helpful, but you wouldn't say Jane is nice but helpful because but like here, it implies that they're opposites, right? So Mary is nice, that's positive, but unhelpful, so that's a negative, right? So Mary is nice but unhelpful, and over here, Jane is nice and helpful. If we switched this unhelpful with helpful, like Jane is nice and unhelpful, or Mary is nice but helpful, that wouldn't make sense. So I think this is giving me an idea of what we need to do with this. So we have lots of these adjectives, either using but or and. If there is and, then we know that these two adjectives that are next to and must be either both positive are both negative because we could say Jane is nice and helpful or we could say Jane is mean and unhelpful but we couldn't say Jane is mean and helpful or Jane is nice and unhelpful so hopefully you see what I mean and if we have the word but it's probably going to be either positive negative or negative positive like we see in number two so I'm going to erase all this scratch work and I guess the next step, okay, we notice this pattern, right? We notice the pattern where we have and plus plus or and minus minus. And we notice we have but plus minus or but minus plus. And that's a good, that's a good guideline to go to follow, right? So this is the guideline we have to follow. We should keep in mind when we're trying to figure out what all of these adjectives mean. And so how will we organize this? How do we start now that we notice this pattern? Well, my best friend and your best friend too should be creating a chart. So I'm going to start by creating a chart. What, what um, adjectives are positive and what adjectives are negative? And hopefully by figuring this out, we can possibly see which of the following we'd be likely to hear, right? So we'd either have positive and positive or positive and, or negative and negative, right? But we couldn't have positive and negative for this one, right? Because it's and. Okay, so I'll stop ranting about that. So I think what we did notice in the very beginning, all of these sentences, they all have these odd adjectives that we don't understand. But there was this one sentence, strungy and struffy, Diane was a pleasure to watch. So in the beginning, we're like, hmm, it's a little different. And it seems like there's a reason why. If we say strungy and struffy, Diane was a pleasure to watch, this implies that strungy and struffy are positive adjectives. And that's because pleasure to watch. If someone is a pleasure to watch, it's probably saying, like, you like watching them. So these must be positive attributes. And therefore, we know that both strungy and struffy are positive. So the nice thing about that is we get a starting point right off. Let's say I did this already. So we get a starting point right off and then assuming that that's all the information we have, we can most likely deduce the positivity or negativity of the rest of the adjectives based on just two of these. So looking at this next one, I see the word strungy. So I'm just going to start over here. So, even though wheezy, John is strungy. When someone says even though, then the word wheezy is probably the opposite of strungy or they're different connotations. So I think wheezy is probably a negative attribute. Even though wheezy, John is strungy. So like maybe you would say, even though strong, John is, or maybe that's not the best example, but even though nice, John is unhelpful. So even though he is positive, John is negative. Or even though negative, John is positive. So hopefully that makes sense. And now we already have three adjectives we can compare. So let's see if I can find a wheezy or a struffy or strungy anywhere else. Wheezy, do we see? Oh, here's a wheezy, right? So Jeremiah is not only sloshful but also wheezy. So, Jeremiah is not only sloshful, but also wheezy. If we were to replace these adjectives with normal things, right? J Jeremiah is not only nice, but also helpful. So as you can see, I used both 
two positive adjectives and that would make sense therefore sloshful must be the same positivity or negativity negativity as wheezy so sloshful is also negative based on our chart all right so now we have sloshful so let's look at this one so even though from z jim is sloshful again this even though implies that from z is the opposite of sloshful so therefore from z must be a positive adjective now let's see if we can find frumsy anywhere else. Oh, I don't see frumsy, but I do see Struffy here. So Carla is blitty but Struffy. So again, we saw with just normal examples that but usually has like a positive and a negative or like a negative and a positive next to it. Therefore, the adjective blitty must be the opposite of Struffy. So Struffy is on the positive side. Therefore, blitty must be negative. And now let's see if we can find Blitty anywhere. Right, so in this one, right? Mary is Blitty but Kluby. So but is positive, negative, or negative, positive. Therefore, Kluby must be the opposite of Blitty. And that's why it's positive. And the next one, the one over here, we see the teacher is Dainty and Kluby. If you say someone is blank and blank, it's two adjectives with the same connotation. So. Dante must also be on the positive side next to Kluvi. So do we see anything else? Slatty, we see Molistic and Slatty, we don't have that. Kluvius and Brastic, we don't have any of that. There is a Dante and we just found Dante, which is very nice. So Molly and Kyle are Slatty but Dante. Again, because there's a but here, Slatty must be the opposite of Dante and therefore Slatty is negative check that and then the first one you see jane is molistic and slatty so and implies they're both either both positive or both negative so we have molistic next to slatty and let's see we have another slatty here which is nice so the sale the salespeople were cluvius and not slatty so this one is a little tricky actually Let's try, let's try just replacing it with normal things, normal adjectives. The salespeople were nice and not helpful. Would that make sense? You would probably say the salespeople were nice and not unhelpful, right? So, because there's a not, it's like a double negative, right? So since this is a positive attribute it's nice and not unhelpful equates to helpful right so therefore if Cluvius is positive then we must have slatty negative therefore we have slatty is negative oh that actually matches so Cluvius must be positive right so we see Cluvius is positive so let's just mark Cluvius right over here And then last but not least, Jennifer is Cluvius and Brastic. We have the and here, so it's a simple yes. If Cluvius is positive, Brastic must also be positive. And that finishes up our kind of messy but very helpful chart over here. So let's look at question A1. Which of the following would you be likely to hear? Meredith is Blitty and Brastic. So... Blitty is negative, Brastic is positive. Would we hear someone say, like, someone is nice and unhelpful? Now we wouldn't hear that with the word and. Therefore, this must not be something we are likely to hear. Let's look at B. The singer was not only Molistic, but also Cluvius. Again, this implies Molistic and Cluvius are on the same side. Not only nice, but also helpful. So are Molistic and Cluvius on the same side in our graph? Ballistic is on the right, which is negative. Cluvi Cluvius is on the left, which is negative. And because they are not the same, B must not make sense either. And C, we see May found a dog that was dainty but sloshful. So 
because of the word but, dainty and sloshful should technically be on opposite sides. Is that true? Sloshful, sloshful, sloshful is negative and dainty is positive. So that matches and therefore our answer must be C. And A2, so what quality or qualities would you be looking for in a person? So if you'd probably be looking for a positive quality. I mean, if I were you, I'd probably be looking for a positive attribute as well. So blitty is on the negative side, therefore must not be blitty. Wheezy is on the negative side, therefore must not be wheezy. Sloshful is also negative. We don't want any negative attributes. And frumsy is positive. So we'd be looking for someone who is frumsy, whatever frumsy means. And that is D. Awesome. And then explain all your answers. So the sounds of the words are not relevant to the meanings. All right, so I believe that we are all molistic in a way. Maybe in 2007, there wasn't a round one and a round two, but typically uh, you don't get like explanation type questions unless you are competing in round two of NACLO and round two of NACLO equals like the invitational, which also equals semifinals, right? So I guess I could briefly explain our thought process here. So first of all, we saw that um, Strungy and Struffy Diane was a pleasure to watch. So we could deduce that Strungy and Struffy must be positive. Strungy and Struffy equals positive. And I'm just writing it very briefly. Hopefully you want to be more detailed during the actual test, but this is kind of just reiterating, reiterating what we talked about during this video. So we started off saying, oh, strong and Struffy must be positive because Diane was a pleasure to watch. And then through that, I won't write the rest, but we could deduce, we could create a chart seeing which adjectives are positive and which adjectives were negative. And through that, we could create a chart that would help us determine if any of these made sense based on how they were connected to each other with like and, but also, but, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, any suggestions, or if there are any problems that you would like to see in the future, please comment it, comment it down below and I will see you next time. Have a good day.